My name is Paul, although I also go by the Hebrew name of Saul. I am a Hebrew from the tribe of Benjamin, and I was taught and trained to be a Pharisee by one of the most famous teachers in Jerusalem, Gamaliel. I was also, I am, I am also a Roman citizen. I hated those that belonged to the way. I did everything that I possibly could to destroy them in the short time that I did not know who the Lord was. I even sat and watched one of the early disciples, apostles, get stoned. And I encouraged it. And then after that, I went on the road getting permission and seeking to find those that followed the way. But little did I know that following the way to destroy it would bring me to the place where I would meet Jesus himself. And so on that way to Damascus, I was struck down and I heard this voice, Saul, Saul, why are you crucified? And I said, Lord, who are you? And he said, I am Jesus, who you are crucifying. And after repentance and after being baptized and after finding out and understanding what Jesus Christ was, the good news, after understanding what it meant to be a disciple of his, an apostle of his, what it meant to be a partner of his, I set out on various journeys with Barnabas first and then later going with others that came alongside of me and that supported me. And out of this, out of this, I became a target, a target of the Jews. And because I was a target of the Jews, I was going to be killed by them and I pleaded that I should be brought to justice the Roman justice. And so I was sent on a ship, I was shipwrecked, I was got onto another ship, and then I came to this home that I am in now, on house arrest. And this Roman soldier here guarantees that I will not escape. But yet it is not a punishment that is not without reward. In fact, it allows me, it allows me to share the word, and share the gospel. And so, advancing the gospel, I ask you, you fellow partners, you who are in Philippi, 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 you who are there, I ask you to be bold as the Christians that are around me are bold. I ask you to share the word as I have been blessed to be able to share the word with the palace guard, even the house of the emperor knows about our Lord. And the partners here have become bold, and so I pray for you, I pray that you will bring me joy by continuing to be bold in the Lord, by continuing to use everything, all the relationships that you have to share the word. So ends the story. If we read our theme text, it says this. It's found in Philippians chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Wow. And so we look at this time that Paul was, for two years or so, was in the prison in Rome. And if we look at, in the, at the end of Acts, in the very last chapter, it talks about what was going on, that people were able to come in, that he was able to speak to, to, to the people that wanted to know. He start, first started with the Jews. And some of the Jews did convert to Christianity, but some of the Jews went away, did not. 
And so he said, it's just, this message is really for the Gentiles. And they kept coming. And in their coming and in their talk with him and him with them, he was able to share the good news. Who would believe that here a prisoner kept in prison, chained to a Roman guard 24 hours a day? Most of us don't know what that's like. I certainly don't know what that's like. But in that, he found a way to serve the Lord. Not only a way to serve the Lord, but to serve the Lord in a way that he said was rich with, with bringing forth an abundance of people who not only knew, but who believed in Jesus. So when you look at the scripture, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Why is it important that the gospel is advanced? The gospel is advanced, and the reason that it is important is because God commands it. And as we advance the gospel of Christ, we also learn how to become a follower, a disciple, and a partner in Jesus. You see, it's not... It's not that just that we hear the good news. It's not that we just hear, as Paul did, get called in this special way. Yes, and as disciples, as the disciples were called, we are called. That's right. And it is a blessing to us. That's right. But Paul says, I press on. I press on, never looking back. Not looking back at what has been the disappointments, perhaps, or what have been the difficulties, but looking forward. And Paul then says, love each other. Love each other so that in that love, people can see what it is to know Jesus as our Savior. And so, yes, he says, I am in prison, I am in chains, but because of the chains, I have an opportunity to serve him in a special way. What are your chains? What's holding you to a certain place? What perhaps is holding you back from being able to go out and create new things, new jobs, new, new, new situations, new adventures? Is it in God's will that those adventures happen? Is it in God's will that you become, not, that you become as Paul became, an ambassador? I think it is. When Paul shared this message in Philippians. Let's take a look at the context that happens, that, that, is, that comes before it, the verses before it. So we start with verse 3 in chapter 1. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are making my prayer with joy. It's only four chapters in Philippians, but there are 16 references to joy. Joy is extremely important in this message. Joy that we can get from each other and joy that we give from each other. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, and I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partake, partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you with all the affection of Christ Jesus, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more. Love may abound more and more. With all the knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The glory and praise of God. In other words, if we put it in our own words, I think Paul is saying this to us. I know I am right about this. You are true partners, and Christ will lead you to the day we see him together. Some people might find my feelings towards you strange, but I know that I am right. And you have been with me through everything I have been through. I want you to know the joy of the Lord even more. And my prayer is that you love even more and remain close to our Savior. Pure and blameless. This morning. Beautiful words. Spoken to the people of Philippians. To the people of Philippi. In the Gospel of, of Philippians. But in the letter of Philippians. But here to us. 
here to us. So one more time, take a look at our text, our theme. I want you to know, brothers, that it, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Paul was called. All of the things that happened in his life, including that these years that he was in prison, was to advance the gospel. Why do we advance the gospel? We advance the gospel because God wants us to. It's a command. Go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them and teaching them what I have commanded you. But, in, but also with that, it is in the process that allows us to change our lives, to be transformed, for us to become fully human beings in a brand new world. You see, a brand new world is not the culture that is around us and the secular things that, that, that tempt us and our own sin that tell us we can't do this or we should do this or we're going to miss out if we don't do this, but rather the brand new world is this transformed world that might seem a little odd because we are human beings, <coughs> sinful human beings, but yet Paul says it in such a beautiful way, and he says it right here, what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, not only people around him, but also inside of him, so that it may become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest for my imprisonment is for Christ. Imperial guard. Imperial guard were hand selected. Imperial Guard were all at the rank, or at least thought to be at the same level as centurions. Centurions in the normal Roman army were over at least 100 people, sometimes much more. They were the elite of the elite, and now this, this guard, well, it could be as many as 6,000 according to some experts, this guard was the top of the class. They protected the emperor, but they also did what the emperor needed to have done in order to control the world, in order to control whatever would happen so that justice was done in the Roman way. He was a Hebrew, but he was a Roman citizen, and a Roman citizen was going to be dealt with by law, the law that would bring justice. And so here he was, tied up, chained up, 24 hours a day, maybe with about that much length of chain, to a Roman soldier. That Roman soldier changed duties every six hours. So in 24 hours, he would be next to four different soldiers. Did they repeat day after day after day? Perhaps they did, but I would think that since they were hearing about this Paul and what he was like and the love that he showed and the, and, and the truth that he spoke of, people would be eager to see him full rank, so to speak. And so I would imagine that he saw and met over those two years a, 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 a lot of different guards. And he also said that it's not only the guards, but that it's also in the household of the emperor himself. Now, whether it was in the very, how close that came to the emperor, we don't know, but we do know that in that house, as well as in all the houses that supported the emperor, there were believers, believers that were advancing the gospel. All the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ, and most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Wow. Do you hear your name being called? Do you hear I do? I hear, I hear it as I saw yesterday and dare to share so many young teenagers and, and their counselors. And Sean was there and five of our youth were there. And I saw them excited about not only the message and the songs, but also excited about doing something for the Lord. And so we, we put together food packets, food packets that would be sent to the Philippines. The Philippines, which we have prayed about and we know about because of the typhoon and the tragedy that they've had there. And this is a way that we can advance the gospel. And this is a way that has been done right inside of our midst. So we look at what is happening. We look at the advancement of the gospel. We know that the advancement of the gospel is God wants it to happen. God commands it to happen, and by it happening, we become different. We become different. 
And so that's when we see that our lives are being shaped and transformed by the word itself and by the actions that the word directs us to. That's a small, maybe easy to forget or easy to miss point. You say, well, that doesn't happen in my life. <laughs> Just wait. Pray for it and be careful of what you pray for because it will happen. So where is it? What is it that God is saying? This could happen in your life. <laughs> Through these relationships that you have, this could be changed. You might have an opportunity that you're not seeing that could happen. And why would you want to share something that's so private? God wants you to. God also says that if you do, you will become closer to God as a partner. And it is this beautiful message, this joy that Paul is sharing with the people that he was writing to and this joy that he's sharing with us. I want you to have this joy. And how can we keep this joy for the people around us? When do we do it? When a relationship's allowed. When we're chained up to somebody, that's what Paul was. What a, what a different way of looking at it. And so we continue with our adventure, Paul's adventure. As we finish this part of chapter 1, there's an interesting section. And it speaks to me very specifically, so I'd like to take a look at it. I don't want to digress from the theme, but I want to take a quick look at verses 15 to 18. Paul gives us this warning. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from good will. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. Now let me pause, because there might be some questions right now. So what he's saying is he knows of people that are preaching Christ, but they're doing it for the wrong reason. Now, let us, let us make it clear that they are preaching Christ. They're not preaching something that's not Christ. They're not, not, they're not a cult. They're not the Mormon religion, which, get, which says the right words, but the right words don't have the same meaning. As the same true for Jehovah Witness and wherever we're talking about. They might say Jesus Christ, but they are not talking about the Jesus Christ that is our Savior as we know our Savior, as the scriptures tell us our Savior needs to be identified and to be believed. So he's not talking, Paul is not talking about false doctrine, but he's talking about people who, because of their sinfulness, because of their anger, because of their envy, because of their rivalry, they are, they are preaching for the wrong reasons. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. Have you read ahead? What does he say? What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. In that I rejoice. So what I'm saying here, I think, or what the, more importantly, what the scriptures are saying to us, is that if people are saying, are speaking, are talking about Christ, and they might not be our denomination. Whoa. They might not be exactly how we might think that a Christian church should be, but they are speaking from the scripture and they're speaking about Jesus Christ as the Savior. To this means that we should honor what they are saying. As Paul said, you should honor those that are speaking it for the wrong reason. Speak the truth, but if it's, if it's spoken, if it's proclaimed, in that we rejoice. You know, there's a question that I have. And it's pretty obvious, but we can say in one way that this chain Paul had tied around the cross. And so I could walk away, could walk away saying Paul was not really chained to a Roman soldier, but rather he was chained to the cross. What a powerful image, isn't it? Wow. I haven't thought about it often enough that way. But you know, there's another angle. Instead of being chained to a Roman soldier, Paul had this fishing pole, this line, didn't he? And he could go fishing. And he could reach out 
And the person on the end of it was not his captor, but was captive to him. And so as we look forward to how, the things that God will bring into our lives, as we are chained to, the, to Christ, as we understand what he wants us to do as far as moving the partnership forward, moving the partnership in a way which brings us closer to what God has identified we are, and also it brings the growth of people who believe in his word. Amen.